Hi everyone, I know one of the goals on top of your minds for 2023 is to start investing in the stock market. So if you're looking to start investing in the stock market or if you're just curious, this is how I would start investing if I was starting completely from scratch. Now I've been investing for more than a decade, but if I was to start from scratch right now, today, this is what I would be doing these are the stocks that I would be buying and this is how I would be doing it. So stay tuned. I'm going to walk you through the list of my top stocks to buy and how I would go about buying these stocks over time. So let's get right into it. Let's start with my list of stocks I would buy. Now this list includes 20 stocks, right? So if I was starting from scratch, I would try to simplify it, right? To do just to pick 20 stocks and these are the 20 stocks I would pick and I've broken them out in groups of five and this is going to be a brief overview of why I like each one of these stocks if you want a more comprehensive analysis of why each one of why I picked each one of these stocks I have a video and probably several videos on each of these stocks in my channel so you could look through find those I think you will enjoy them for now I'll just give you a brief overview here so the first stock Salesforce is a customer relationship management company which I think is going to be crucial going forward businesses are going to want to make sure they are handling their customer relationships well they don't want to miss out on any opportunities Salesforce is going to help with that I think they will do well and a common theme among all of these companies that I will list here is that the stocks are not expensive and similarly Microsoft is another company that is essential and uh, vital in the way people work uh, whether it's in the office or from home you're probably using one of Microsoft software to work on your computer the next is Mercado Libre which is sometimes referred to as the Amazon and PayPal of Latin America and Latin American e-commerce growth is expected to be much faster than anywhere else in the world going forward over the next few years. Airbnb is going to benefit from all the pent up demand in travel. We, many of us had to delay or cancel trips during the pandemic. Airbnb is one of the most popular travel companies to use when people look to travel. It stands to benefit. Alphabet, of course, you're watching this video on YouTube. YouTube has over 2 billion monthly active users and then Google search is one of the most dominant search engines in the world. Advertisers spent nearly $800 billion in 2021. When the 2022 figures are released, I fully expect those to be even higher than they were in 2021. And Alphabet is the most dominant ad company in the world. Advertisers are going to continue spending money to, to try and get your attention throughout uh, eternity, I would say. Advertising is never going away, in my opinion. The next list of five starts with Chegg, which is an education technology company that works primarily with college students. If you've been to college in the last five years, you probably know Chegg. It has 90% name recognition on college campuses, over 80 million proprietary pieces of content that college students look for when they're doing their homework assignments or trying to learn a new concept. Next comes Visa and MasterCard. Of course, they get a percentage of every transaction that happens that ha with a card of any of with their names on it. So their asset like business model benefits from their decades of building these relationships with merchants and consumers. And they're going to get two to four percent on each transaction. Uh, and that's going to benefit from rising inflation because as nominal prices increase, Visa and MasterCard's uh, revenues are going to increase. Next is PayPal. Similar to Visa and MasterCard, PayPal gets a transaction fee from all of the transactions. And then PayPal also has the additional benefit of being adding convenience for consumers. You, you use your login for PayPal instead of having to put in your card information for each new website that you spend money at online. 
And then we have Palo Alto Networks, which is one of the leading companies in terms of cybersecurity. And I think cybersecurity is going to grow at double digit rates over the next three to five years. And Palo Alto being one of the leading companies stands to benefit from that trend. The next list starts with the Walt Disney Company, one of the most popular companies in the world. It was devastated during the pandemic and now it's rebounding as economies reopen. Similar with Nike, Nike was devastated, not all of its business, name, mainly its business uh, segment uh, geography in China. That's rebounding now as China's economy is reopening and that could be a benefit, a tailwind to Nike over the next several years. Meta platforms, of course, uh, billions of daily active users, people logging on to one of Meta platforms apps on a daily basis. The company was was hammered in 2022, facing several headwinds. I believe one of the main headwinds, the competition with TikTok is going to improve in 2023 as Meta rolls out its own short form video format. And that's going to be a, a good news for investors going forward. And then we have Adobe, one of the leading creative solution softwares and trading at a relatively inexpensive valuation. And finally, Netflix, the streaming content pioneer. If there is a major recession in 2023 or if consumers starting to get pinched in their budgets, Netflix is one of the cheapest entertainment options for a household. They can get a month worth of entertainment for less than $20 per month for the whole family. And the final five starts with eBay and Etsy, which are both asset light e-commerce businesses that bring together buyers and sellers and they get a fee for each transaction. I like if you haven't already noticed, I like the asset light business model and you'll see that throughout my channel. If you are to watch the rest of my videos, you probably already know I like asset light business models. DocuSign, the electronic signature solution company, I think has several years of tailwind ahead of it. It's just so much more convenient to sign documents electronically instead of having to meet in person, drive to an office to sign documents. And then Home Depot has done an excellent job managing the business throughout the pandemic. To me, management demonstrated skill in merchandising, showing itself why it's the, it's the home improvement leader. And I suspect it to continue to thrive over the next decade or more. It's just such a good business. It's run so well. I like this business a lot. And finally, Starbucks, the worldwide coffee chain company has is very popular i think if you visited a starbucks you've hardly ever visited one that has doesn't have a long line both inside and in the drive through and similar to nike starbucks business in china has suffered because of the pandemic now that china's economy is st uh, slowly reopening starbucks stands to benefit from that trend as well okay so now that i've listed all of my 20 stocks that I would buy if I was starting from scratch. Now let me show you how I would do it, right? I wouldn't just jump in and buy all 20 of them, right? And and how would I split the purchases between these 20, right? So that's what I want to show you in the next slide. Here's how I would do it. So if I was investing, starting investing $10,000 into uh, you know, beginning from scratch and I had $10,000 to invest, I would split it into five parts of $2,000 each. I would then allocate $2,000 each month over the next five months. And I would buy $100 worth of each of the 20 stocks listed earlier. So I would buy $100 worth of each of the 20 stocks totaling $2,000. And I would do that for each month over the next five months, right? So I would buy $2,000 worth in January, $2,000 worth in February, $2,000 worth in, in March, and so on, right? Until my full $10,000 was allocated. That way, if there is a major decrease in the stock market over the next few months, you get to buy some parts of your allocation at lower prices, okay? So it decreases your risk of experiencing a major loss if you buy all of it all at once and this is 
especially important right now because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates which is causing stock prices to fall and they have indicated they are going to continue raising interest rates and it's uncertain how far they will need to raise interest rates and so by splitting your purchase over five months you relieve some of the risk that the Federal Reserve may have to increase interest rates more than they have stated because inflation continues to persist in that way you protect yourself a little bit you get to dollar cost average at lower prices okay and then what I would also do during this time throughout these five months is I would monitor the stocks on the recommended list for major changes okay now I already talked about the stock prices falling but there's also if there's an unjustified price increase for any reason if one of the stocks was just to explode for thir by 30 percent or 40 percent or if should one of those 20 companies I listed earlier should it become a meme stock and explode by 10 times the uh, the price amount I would then moderate my purchase I would change my plans slightly okay so I would mo I would monitor for any of those kind of major changes right any minor changes right moves of of let's say between uh, zero and ten percent I, I would still stick with the plan but anything major like a like a 50 percent increase or a multiples increase I would I would you know change and moderate the plan and if you follow my channel I these are companies that I make videos on frequently so you'll be aware of any major changes that happen so I suggest staying tuned to my channel for those changes right uh, so yeah any big change in re in recommendation I would moderate the strategy that's what I would be uh, that's what I would be monitoring so that's how I would do it those are the 20 stocks I would buy if I was starting from scratch with $10,000 I would split my purchases evenly across the 20 stocks and I would also split my purchases evenly across five months okay so that would be my plan on how I would start investing if I was starting from scratch all right that's all I've got for this video thank you for watching and I'll see you next time I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.